In this problem, we have a restaurant at the top of a very tall building in Seattle rotating 1.06 revolutions. That's 1.06 times around the circle every hour. We have a woman sitting 18.8 .8 meters from the center of the restaurant. So I guess in my mind, I'm picturing this circular restaurant. Here is the center of the restaurant. And we have a person on the outside of the restaurant that's 18.8 .8 meters from the center and it is rotating. It doesn't say which direction, so you could just uh, make something up. Let's suppose that it's rotating in this direction here, and that would form some angle theta in there. And our question first is, through how many radians does she turn in 116 minutes? So it's nice that they're working in radians here, because eventually they're going to ask, how far does Christina move, which would be the arc length uh, outside that sector. Uh, and to use the arc length formula, you need theta in radians. So they're kind of stepping us through this problem. Our ultimate goal is to do B, and A will help us accomplish that first. So if you've ever seen a dimensional analysis uh, problem, you, you'd notice that this is mainly a unit conversion problem. So notice that they gave me how fast she was turning in revolutions, and they asked the question, uh, they want the answer in terms of radians. We need to convert from revolutions to radians. Also, they told me how fast she was moving around the circle in terms of hours, and they're giving us more information in terms of minutes. So we've got a couple of unit conversions to do. Uh, so in part A, I'm going to write down the first given information we had, that she's making a little more than one time around the circle per hour. It's 1.06 revolutions. Uh, so she goes around the circle a little bit more than one time uh, per hour. So if you give her an hour, she'd go all the way around the circle. Uh, we want to convert that to radians. How far does she travel in radians as opposed to revolutions? Uh, and eventually, I want to know how far, uh, you know, what angle does she turn in 116 minutes? So before I can figure out how far she turns in 116 minutes, let me first find how many radians she moves in one minute. Uh, so here we go with the unit analysis. If you've ever done this before, you realize, uh, so for example, if you want to change hours to minutes, you realize since hours is in the denominator, I need to put hours into the numerator, and they would cancel. So that would get rid of hours, uh, and I want to convert hours into minutes. So since I want uh, my final goal, I guess I should put that out here. My final goal would be to figure out how many radians she goes through in each minute. So we're going to change revolutions to radians, and we're going to change hours to minutes. If I knew how many radians per minute she was traveling, uh, if I knew how many radians in one minute she traveled, I could simply multiply by 116 minutes and get uh, that answer. So I'm going to put minutes down here since that's my goal. So notice we're halfway there. Hours would cancel, and I'd have minutes in the denominator because I put it there. That's my goal. Uh, so my answer right now would be in revolutions per minute, but I need to put some numbers here. What is the relationship, the numerical relationship between an hour and a minute? So we know that one hour is 60 minutes. So this number divided by that number would tell me how many times around the circle, how many revolutions per 60 minutes. And I want to know uh, how many revolutions she makes in one minute, how many radians, how many, excuse me, how many radians per minute. Uh, so I want to convert revolutions to radians. And as I did before, since I want to get rid of revolutions and I want radians, and since revolutions on top, I'm going to have to put revolutions in the denominator. So this is in the numerator, this is the denominator, they would cancel, and that would get rid of revolutions, and my goal is to have radians in the numerator, so I simply put that there. Then you need to write the numerical relationship between these two things. We arbitrarily define uh, one time around the circle to be 2 pi radians. Uh, don't try to make too much sense of that, that was just an arbitrary uh, assignment there. You could use 360 degrees. Uh, we're going to work in radians. You'll see why in part B why that's beneficial. Uh, so now if you were to cancel revolutions, since we already canceled hours and now we're canceling revolutions, uh, if you did this calculation, this would be how far she turns in terms of an angle, how far she turns in radians per minute. So I got my goal. It's in radians per minute. In fact, if you want, I'll sneak over and figure out exactly what that is. So uh, on a calculator, I'm going to do 1.06. I'm going to divide by 60, and I'm going to press Enter, and then I'm going to multiply by uh, 2 pi. So try to keep, um, you know, by the way, second care is how you get a pi. Keep in mind what these numbers mean. 0.111 means 
that she makes, 0.111 radians, that's how far that angle turns, it turns 0.111 uh, radians every minute. So about a tenth of a radian per minute. We want to know how many radians she moves in 116 minutes. So if this is how far uh, she turns in one minute, right, this is per minute, um, I can just simply multiply by 116 minutes and notice that would make the minutes cancel. And I would figure out how many radians she, she went in uh, or, or turned through. And that's the question, through how many radians. So this is good. I want my final answer to be in radians. And if you look through this, you see that radians was the only unit to survive. So I now need to just go back to my calculator, multiply by 116. So this is how many radians she does in one minute. Multiply by how many minutes you're going to let her turn. And that's how many radians she turns in 116. 16 minutes. Uh, so to two decimals, because it says uh, report the answers to two decimal places, uh, is 12.88. So 12.88 radians is how far she traveled. And keep in mind that's the state of here. So the idea is she's turning around the circle at basically almost just one revolution every hour. We figured out that if you let that happen for 116 minutes, that she's going to go through, the angle is going to go through 12.88 radians. This is my theta here. So this is sort of a, not cumbersome, but unintuitive uh, unit to work with. The advantage is in part B, uh, we're going to use a formula that involves theta, and it necessitates that you're in radians, and we already have that. So had we done this in a more familiar unit in degrees, we would have had to convert it down here. Uh, so part B asks a slightly different question. It's not you know, through how many degrees or radians did she turn, you know. <laughs> so we're asking the same question twice but in different ways. This is how far she traveled in terms of an angle in 116 minutes. This question is how far did she move, meaning in meters. How many meters did she travel? So this is where I'm going to make use of the fact that they said that the radius of the circle was 18.8 uh, meters. It says that she sits 18.8 .8 meters from the center. That creates the radius of the circle. Uh, I want to know how far she travels, so that's actually this arc length right here, this distance along the circle. This is how many meters she traveled, and the formula for that uh, is the arc length, I don't know why, we usually call it S, can be found by simply taking that radius R, 18.8, and multiplying by theta, that uh, angle there, and it needs to be in radians, but we already have it in radians, so we are all set to go. This is going to be an easy calculation. The distance that she would travel uh, S, that arc length, is simply take your radius of 18.8 um, meters, and we already have that on the calculator, or excuse me, we already have theta on our calculator to be uh, 12, uh, what is it, 12.88. So I'm going to use the unrounded version. Don't think that because I round this to two decimal places, uh, that at least in math, that my final answer is good to two decimal places. Uh, when you get into the application field of uh, chemistry, you'd see that they have their own rounding system called significant figures. But for us, we try to keep as many decimal places as possible. Uh, it actually, if you want to know, actually uh, depends on how accurate the information was collected, and that's a better way to do the problem. But for us, we're going to uh, discount that for this problem. Simply say that I already have 12.88, the unrounded version of my calculator, and we're going to multiply by the radius 18.8. Uh, uh, so I imagine if you show this to your chemistry teacher, they may scream that I didn't use significant figures. Uh, but uh, if I do this, I get that the distance in meters that she traveled <clears throat> was 242, and since I'm supposed to report my answers accurate to do decimal places, uh, 242.08. Uh, so before I forget that, 242.08, uh, uh, and don't forget what this is in. <clears throat> this is arc length. <laughs> Since my radius was uh, calculated in meters, um, I can say that my distance each traveled is in meters. And you should argue that since this distance was only uh, accurate to one decimal place, you know, what makes us think that we can report our answer uh, to two? But I'm going to let your uh, physics or uh, chemistry uh, faculty explain that one.